because it feels like if the board breaks in this way, Toronto might be the big winner of the draft here. So let's move down to Cleveland then, because I think if Green, as you said, if, if Houston goes with Suggs or Mobley at two, Cleveland pretty no-brainer goes Green there. If Green's off the board and it's probably between Mobley and Suggs, so if you were Cleveland, which one of those guys would you prefer? I'd go Mobley. I mean, I have Mobley um, pretty much in a, in a different tier than Suggs. I mean, I in a vacuum, I take Mobley, and then for that particular team, I take Mobley. And uh, I, obviously, the big question is, what do you do about Jared Allen? And do they mm-hmm. resign him? And do they play together? Uh, I'm not against the idea of playing Mobley at the four. I mean, I, I, mostly because he can guard that position. And they always say, you know, your position is who you can guard. I, Mobley can guard for us. Uh, the question is offensively, is he, is, will he create enough space with Allen, you know, for the, for the guards? Um, and and I hesitate on that. You know, I know he, I, I think eventually he's going to be a threat from downtown. Right now, I buy his shot in the mid-range. Uh, them two together, Mobley and, and Allen is not ideal. Um, but I think when you head into the draft, you worry about what you're going to do with Allen later and you take the best player available. Mm-hmm. And and Mobley, to me, is the best player available. And, you know, if you have to let Allen walk and, and save some save some money there and, and, and let Mobley thrive as your as your anchor, you do it. I think he's that good of a prospect and he's that good of a fit for, for the other cornerstones for what they have. You know, with Suggs, like if you take Suggs, you have to you have to know that you can get a deal for Sexton that you really like. Mm-hmm. You, know, you, you can't really play them all three together, and and to waste a number three pick on the guy you're going to bring off the bench just doesn't really make that much sense. Um, so you have to know that. Hopefully, Cleveland has done their homework on what type of return they can get for Sexton, assuming he's the guy that they would deal uh, over Garland. Although I could be totally wrong there, but yeah, regardless, you have to know that there's some type of deal in place that you like before you draft Suggs, I would think. Because Sexton, Sexton's another guy, like Levine, like his value is all over the place. Like, is he good mm-hmm. or is he or is he not the guy you want to build with? And I don't really know the answer to that question. Really, what I think doesn't matter. It's what, what teams who are in the trade market think about about their value. So uh, hopefully Cleveland has done their homework to, to get a feel for what the value is of, of those two guards um, so they know whether or not it's worth taking a guy like Suggs. Yeah, you know, my thought with... Cleveland in particular, if you take Mobley and you, you know, you, you were planning on re-signing Allen and then you get this lucky break and all of a sudden you have another big, it, it gives them some leverage in those contract negotiations where, you know, if Allen comes in wanting a max deal, I don't think you want to sign Jared Allen to a max deal, but you might have felt pressure to do so before Mobley fell into your lap. So now you say, okay, now we have a price point that if you get more than that, we'll just let you walk. Like, we didn't give up that much to get you, so it's yeah. not a huge loss. That's true. Um, whereas I think you're right, with Suggs, it's like you're almost forced to trade Sexton in particular. I mean, have you heard? It sounds like they're lukewarm on what Sexton is going to want on this next contract. So have you heard a lot in terms of his availability and like what they're looking for in return? I haven't heard anything specific on him, but knowing Sexton, like from high school, like he's going to want the bag. He's he's yeah. he's he's got like an unbelievable amount of confidence in himself, and he's going to want a lot of money. So I, I it's he's so tricky because I just don't really know what other teams think of him, mm-hmm. um, and and really how how Cleveland values him to this particular team. I mean, you look at his numbers and they're awfully good. I mean, who uh, we think of him as like this inefficient guy, but yeah. I think he shot like 48% from the floor and put in 25 a game. And and so, I don't know. He's he's just tough to really to, to get a, a feel for what his value is and, and how Cleveland values him. And yeah. what other teams would pay for him. I, I mean, I, it's it's tough. I only ask because he continually comes up in the trade Ben Simmons discussion. It's like Sexton and Love has been the other package that you hear all the time other than C.J. McCollum. So, mm. I, yeah, I'm curious in terms of like what – Cleveland is hoping to get in return for him and what they would be willing to get, you know, especially if they're trying to package love with him, what type of return they're hoping to get there. Right. Um, and then there's the other question, like what happens if Cleveland thinks that Suggs is the, is the best player in the draft? 
Right. I mean, and then if that's if they think Suggs is definitely better than Mobley, which is possible, I don't think that's the craziest thing in the world. Then they'll have a little more motivation to 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 give up sex, and they may not need like a ridiculous haul in, in return. Mm-hmm. So let's move to Toronto now, because it feels like if the board breaks in this way, Toronto may be the big winner of the draft here. Just by getting, you know, you you go into the draft lottery thinking you're probably going to be in like the seven, eight range. You jump up to four. Kyle Lowry's about to be a free agent. And like, oh, here's Jalen Suggs, who just falls right into your lap. So what do you think about Suggs' as fit in Toronto? How could he play next to Fred Van Vliet in particular? And do you think if the board falls in this way and, you know, they do get Suggs, is Kyle Lowry looking for a new home this summer? I mean, the NBA guys, you, you know, you guys cover the NBA, so you would probably have a better idea than me of what they're thinking with Kyle Lowry. And I'm sure that they've already thought this through, knowing where they're picking on the board and who's likely to go top three. And they're, and, and they're going to, you know, who, how do they value this whole bring in Suggs versus move Lowry? And, I mean, you can tell me, like, do you think they, do you think Lowry, are, are they going to try and compete again next year with the same group? I mean, it doesn't really make much sense. They won 27 games. I think clearly their their ceiling is, is, is capped at this point. Um, and so it would, from my perspective, it would make sense to just move on from Lowry and, and grab Suggs, who I think just really replaces him so easily. They're, they're, they're almost similar players. Um, and so I think it's an easy plug-and-play fit with Suggs and Van Vliet. Um, but again, Lowry is so much attachment to that city and i don't know how they how they value that situation with him and so i don't know what what do you guys think do you think that toronto is is ready to reset a little bit um or or is lowry such a big part of that franchise that they're going to want to bring him back oh we've had this conversation a lot and it's honestly a a very interesting situation they're in uh specifically this summer because they could go all in on a rebuild if they wanted to and move off of Siakam and Fred Van Vliet and just get a ton of draft picks and complement that with the number four pick or whoever drops to that point. Or they could sort of retool a little bit, get Jalen Suggs and keep Fred Van Vliet around, keep the Siakam around and see what they can do with this young group that some of them are, are prime guys, some of them are younger, like Eric Trent Jr. I think is only 22 still, so there's time there. OG Nobi 23 or 24. So like they can just swing in whatever position they want. It's I think personally, it's one of the biggest question marks in the entire NBA. Like they can change their future so easily this summer just depends on what they do and also like just the uncertainty of not knowing whether Masai Ujiri is going to be there it is it is like just there's so many question marks hovering around this team but I, I personally I think they need to explore every single avenue I mean we know the Knicks can absorb Fred Van Vliet's contract immediately they're looking for a point guard they could hand over several draft picks they have two in the first round this year they could attach future picks down the line you know you can definitely get off of Pascal Siakam that there's probably a case to be made that he could go to go the Golden State Warriors in a, in a trade where James Wiseman comes back and like the Minnesota pick like there's so many possibilities with that team but you like you said something that's also interesting just in terms of the the entire attachment the emotional attachment to Kyle Lowry and and the and the Raptors I think it really boils down to what he wants to do. If he's mm-hmm. like, I want to get back there. I love Toronto. I, I I want to be a part of this thing one more time. Then I think all their plans of a retool or a rebuild, that goes out the window. It's like, let's get Kyle back. Let's see what we can get. And then it doesn't even matter how many wins we, <laughs> we squeeze out. Yeah. yeah. Toronto's in a weird spot. I mean, you look at that roster and they have like good young players. Yeah. yeah. And some veteran guy, and you'd think they'd have won more games. And I, you know, I'm not a Raptors guy. I don't watch all those games. I don't really understand why they didn't win as many games. I guess injuries played some, some role in it. But uh, they're in a weird spot where they have good young players. You think that their ceiling is is higher than, than what the record showed. Uh, yeah. But at the same time, there's an opportunity to like restart. We're talking about trading Siakam. Like, he was the man two years ago, like an up and coming like all star <laughs> player. And now we're talking about trading him. Um, and Van Vliet, they just signed him to this big deal, and he's another up and coming guy. And OG is like better offensively than I thought he would be. Mm-hmm. Um, and so we're talking about blowing this up. I mean, it's like they just started with these young guys, and, and 
Um, and here they are with the fourth pick. I mean, there's just so many different directions they can go with this. So, yeah, th- th- this is definitely one of the more interesting situations to uh, to monitor. Yeah. I, Regardless, I, I, I don't think they can fail. Like, Brian, you, yeah. you basically said this. By by getting the fourth pick, they're getting, like, one of the top, uh, you know, the, we mostly consider this draft, like, there, there's a clear top four, and then there's a significant step down from there. So just for them to secure one of those, huge. Absolutely huge. Yeah, right. Yeah, I think that's what, like, they almost can't go wrong. Like, if Mobley falls to them at four and you can pair Siakam and Mobley in the front court, that works. If Jalen Green somehow falls to four, Fred Van Vliet and Jalen Green is a great combo. Like, no matter what, as long as they get one of those guys, which they now will, they're in great shape. But, you know, I, I'm less in the, like, total blow it up rebuild. I, like, I think they've got, as you said, Wes, they have some, like, good, you know, Siakam and Van Vliet are both. 27 now so like they're a little older than we would think for like up and coming guys but yeah. guys who are still growing into their roles but then you know og is turning 24 in a couple weeks here um uh who else oh gary Trent jr the, you know they're presumably gonna resign him he's only 22 you get malachi flynn who at least could show some flashes off the bench you add jalen suggs to that like uh suggs van vliet gary trent og pascal lineup is pretty much exactly what you would think out of a modern nba small ball lineup like that that thing is going to cook both offensively and defensively so you know i i I, for their sake i hope they get subs at four let lowry i think ideally you would work out a sign and trade for him if you're you know trying not to lose him for nothing but i just had a piece published at fan sided like minutes ago about this where if he walks they actually have about like an extra 10 million in cap space plus uh the room mid-level so they have more room to build out their bench which you know big was a a big issue for them last year until they got ken birch at the end of the season so i think there's a lot of reason to move on from lowry now depending on how the draft shakes out but they are in you know, I, I think they're going right back into playoff contention next year if they don't take a sledgehammer to this thing. Another hypothetical to think about that I was just... Um, I think Mobley would be great for Toronto. And I don't think he's mm-hmm. going to be there at four. And I know that there are people in the Rockets organization that really like Suggs. You wonder if there's like a 2-4 swap oh. that could happen. If Tor- you know, Toronto obviously has the pieces to make an interesting trade up. Um, and depending on, again, this is all on how Houston values the Mobley Green Suggs one two three uh those are two teams you think would have should have some type of conversation yeah yeah no, that that is interesting it is like Houston needs everything like we already talked about so for them to pick up additional assets that right way. like right if, if they don't see a big difference between Mobley Green and Suggs and again I know I know people in their organization who really like Suggs if they were to move down to four and get something really big in return if you're Toronto, I mean, I think Mobley is just so perfect there. Um, that's something to think about. Yeah. Yeah. 